order to be effective in learning, you have to manage your time. Time management is critical. You need to determine how much time you need to devote to each of your classes and to life's necessities, such as food, clothes, washing, health, car care, etc. Schedule will help you manage your time effectively. Phone apps. If you have an iPhone, the class schedule app is most recommended. If you have an Android phone, both Chalkboard and Agenda have the best recommendations. You must set them up and most important, use them. There are several schedule types. Semester schedule, this is the schedule you create that lists all the classes, labs, meetings, and other activities for this time period. Weekly schedule, this is the schedule of all the activities, tasks, and things that need to be done during the week. Use the semester schedule to plan your weekly schedule. Daily schedule, this is an hourly breakdown of all the activities for the day. Using the schedule will help you be able to accomplish more. You will be able to more effectively manage your life and tasks to be more productive, be less harried, and this usually allows you to take control of your time. Here's an example of semester schedule. You will note on the left-hand side, we have class names, English composition, American history, physics, biology 101, biology lab, your assignments, weeks, and spring break is, and your final list, what your exam dates are. There's also a weekly schedule. List when you sleep, tasks for the day, and it goes on there for every day. Okay, you will know you do have time for entertainment one night a week, not every night of the week. And daily schedules. So daily schedule can really help you keep track of your, your time. So you have your daily evolution at 6.30 when you plan it. You got breakfast, you got math 101, the English rhetoric, art 101. <clears throat> Rewrite your notes, eat lunch, do your math homework, and colonial history at one o'clock. Or you roll out minute by minute. You wake up. Go to your math class, notebook, English class at 9, no paper, no pen. 10 o'clock, Art 101, you're really hungry. 11 to 1, you're back at the dorm. You shower, get money, go eat, hang out, student union. 1 o'clock, you have colonial history. Which one do you think worked better? Time assessment. In order to make up a daily schedule, you have to determine what you're doing on a daily basis, both on class days and on non-class days. Schedule some slack time, but do it for three or four hours a week, not two or three days. Make sure you include time for regular tasks for exercise. Be sure to include at least seven hours for sleep. This is the primary ingredient for success in learning and life. Some individuals need eight or nine hours of sleep. General rule of thumb for study time is you should spend three hours of study time for every hour of class time. There will be some classes that don't require that much time, but there will be classes, especially foreign languages and hard sciences, that will require more study time. Initially, give each class that amount of study time and see how much time you have left for other activities. This can be quite informational. If you're taking four classes, that's 12 semester hours. Therefore, four classes you attend three times per week. Four times three equals 12 hours. 12 hours times three is 36. That means you must spend 36 hours per week studying your class materials. That's the minimum time that's recommended. Remember, studying does not only consist of reviewing and writing your notes, but doing your assignments, doing the research, writing the reports and research papers. Time analysis, determine how much time you spend doing things, school, work, and leisure activities. Your school tasks, the classes, the homework, lab, study time, work, how often do you work, how long on what day. Leisure, which your hobbies are, social media, family time, gaming, church, and exercise. Once you've figured out how much time you spend doing these things, then you can start using a goal schedule to accomplish all these tasks you need to do. you got to set your goals. Prioritize your time and making a list of the goals you want to accomplish. Use number one priorities for those goals that must get done. Use number two priority designation for those goals that should be done. And use number three priority for those goals that should be nice to accomplish. Here's an example of a goal flow chart. So you got your weekly goals you're trying to get accomplished. And uh, here's some things you want to accomplish for the semester. And if you pass that physics test, hey, get the hot rock massage at El Vita. You might get your associate's degree in long term, you might get your bachelor's degree. Okay, take the list of goals you listed and work on the highest priority item. Then take on the next highest priority item. Don't make a list of 18 things that need to be done in one day. Make a list of only those tasks that must be that have to be done today, then those have to be done in two days. Keep on laying out your timeline for tasks. By using a goals list and doing these important tasks, you can manage your tasks and your time more effectively. You will probably note you have very little time for social and leisure activities. This is to be expected. Educational tasks will take up most of the time you previously used for leisure. 
This is part of the prize of getting education. You must make the task that will help you succeed in school a priority in order to be successful in school. Remember, the more you learn, the more you will learn. So push hard, work hard, push yourself, and you will get further in school and in life. How to learn effectively. There's four types of learning. Visual learners. You learn by seeing and looking. Auditory learners. You learn by hearing and listening. Kinesthetic learners. You learn by touching and doing. Reading and writing learners, you learn by reading about subjects and writing down information. In actuality, it's most likely that you learn by using multiple pathways, but there's usually a preferred information pathway for your brain. Use the learning style is most effective for you. Ways to increase information retention. Use the SQUIRT study method. SQUIRT is an acronym which stands for S stands for SCAN, a paragraph. Q is questions. Form three to five questions in that paragraph and write them down. R is redefine the answers to those questions and write them down. R recite aloud both the questions and answers. T is teach these questions to another person, dog, wall, etc. Teach them. The reason the study method works is because it forces the information you're working with to go from your short term memory to your long term memory. Your short term memory is for your immediate information needs. And most of this information is not retained because you don't need to keep it. Long-term memories where memories that have made in the lasting impression in your mind are stored. By doing all the steps and by writing all the information down, the time and concentration you get this information down cause the information to be transferred into your long-term memory. Ways to increase information retention. Use acronyms, a word, such as NATO, radar, or laser, formed from initial letters or letters of each of the discussed parts or major parts of a compound term. NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization. By using an acronym, you can usually retrieve the full depth of information that this acronym represents. Use mnemonics to help remember the order and specifics of the information. Mnemonics are a system that uses patterns of letters, words, or ideas, which assist in remembering something. Kings play cards on fat green stools, represent the order of taxa and biology, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. Mnemonics can be used for many types of information organization. Rehearse the information that you're trying to learn. Rewriting, reviewing your notes, reading the material in your textbook, and doing the activities and exercises that are assigned will all help increase your retention of the information. By alternating the time and varying the place you study this material, by reviewing your mnemonics and their informational tasks, you will increase your information retention. Finances. Money matters. Don't try and live like a rock star on your student loans. Only take the amount of money you need for essentials, tuition, books, and school supplies. You don't have to take the entire amount offered to you by the financial aid office. Take what you must. Remember, every penny you take, you have to pay back. If you're run over by a truck, they can and will take your disability pay to pay your student loans. Have a personal budget. <clears throat> this is the one most important thing that you can do for yourself. Make a budget. Lay out all your costs. Those items must be paid. Then list all your sources of income. Add all these up, your income and expenses. There should always be more income than there are expenses. If this is not so, you need to decrease your spending. Do not assume that your future income will increase to catch up with your spending. But remember, you probably already have debts. Don't increase your debt ratio. You can use Excel to make a simple budget. Here's an example of a simple budget. When you're in your classes, you must acquire as much information from the professor as possible. This means that your cell phone must be put away. You need to focus on note-taking, asking questions, and watching your professor, not texting on your phone and watching videos. You're paying thousands of dollars for education. Don't squander it by not paying attention in class. It's also very disrespectful to your professor. Note-taking styles. There are several note-taking styles. Descriptive notation, making notes of information that gathered from your textbooks, highlighting your textbooks, side notes in the book, or new range steps or processes, a squirt study method previously discussed. A two-column system uses the method in which you separate the main ideas on the left side of the column and the supporting information in the wider right side column. Space your notes to the left side of the main topic aligned with the right side of the supporting information. Here's an example. The three-column note style. The three-column note style has a column on the left side of the main idea or subject, and two adjacent columns allow for more detailed explanations of those columns. The middle column is used for the main supporting definition or idea, and the last column is used for greater detail. Be sure to align the information in each column to correlate with the main idea. Here's an example of three column note style. In outline note taking, you put a title at the top of your page, then the main idea or topic using Roman numerals, then the subtopic headings using capital letters, and supporting details using lowercase letters. 
For example, attack on Pearl Harbor. Japanese Navy attacks U.S. fleet at anchor. No advance warning. Ammunition locked up. Radar sites saw effects. Attack planes were warned ignored. All aircraft and runways were lining up, perfect for strafing and bombing attacks. Class lecture. When a lecture, sit near the front of the hall. Be prepared with a notebook and writing instruments. Items that are written on the board need to be copied down. Items that are represented, repeated are important and should be written down. Items that the professor stresses need to be written down. Don't talk to your friends, flirt, use your phone, and not focus on the class lecture. If there's something you don't understand, ask a question. You won't be the only one to understand that item. Be an active learning. Use your eyes, ears, brain, and activate your curiosity. By listening closely, you'll stay focused on the lecture and not on the surrounding class. By being open to new ideas and alternative explanations, you'll be able to better absorb new information. Listen for key words, main topics, and supporting details. Always remember that your library cards have access to your online databases. One of the best ones for you to use is Learning Express Library College Success Skills. Thank you. Hope you learned from this class. If you have any questions or comments, please go to our main homepage. Thank you.